Supreme Court of Um Thanks again for inviting me back to, to preach this morning. Um, before we get going, let's uh, always go to, always like to start off by going to God in a word of prayer. Uh, let's go to Him. Uh, God, just thank you for this day, um, this is a chance to gather as your people. Lord, I just pray that you give me your words today, that this is not just a motivational speech. But these are the words from you, Lord, that um, may, may be something that we all hear, we all take in, but even if it's just one person, Lord, I know that your message has been preached and that um, your people uh, will, will do with it what, what they need to do with it, Lord. I pray all this name in Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, once again, thank you again for inviting me and this. Uh, thank you again for some awesome worship, and then just, yeah, that was great. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a, a message called The Fight, and we talk about what does it mean for us to be, to live our lives um, in, in the fight against, uh, against the, the darkness, the, against the spiritual uh, battles that we fight. Uh, but first I want to start off with talking about, kind of just share a little something about me, um, I tend to be somebody who kind of likes to debate. Does anybody here like to debate? Like, like, yeah, I don't like to, like, you know, you end up fighting for something you don't even really believe in. You just want to be the one that like, fights and annoys your little brother or sister. Uh, that was always me growing up. Uh, I remember, you know, high school, college, um, sitting around with my friends, and we would get into, you know, the really important questions in life. Um, you know, is, is hot dog is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, is carrot cake a vegetable? Uh, and we can't always forget, um, you know, does pineapple belong on pizza? I'm sure I just triggered about half the room. Uh, people have strong opinions about those things. Uh, one of the fights that I always um, would would find myself in because I, I played sports growing up, you know. Baseball, soccer, football. We always end up finding with somebody. What what is a sport? I've always had uh, some people believe that a sport has to have a ball or an object, or a puck or a shuttlecock. Uh, but then I always ask. I, I I kind of counter with, well, if, if a sport just has to have a ball or something involved with it, it. What about the Olympics? You know, you have track and field, you have skiing, you have uh, skating, rowing. You have all these sports. I mean, the, the thing that's supposed to be every four years that, that, that shows us all these amazing athletes throughout the world. And then sometimes, I, some people will be like, oh yeah, okay, I, I see what you're saying. And, but then I, people just, they just get stubborn. They just say, well, those are activities. Those are sports. To which I always say, well, what about boxing? The sweet science, as it's sometimes called. Boxing, the, the sport where you get a bunch of buff men and women just standing in a, they call it a ring, but it's a square. Uh, stand in the ring and punch each other in the face until somebody falls down. Uh, you, try to tell them, you try to tell them one of them that they're not playing the sport. And usually most people will say, okay, I see where you're, saying, where you're coming from. And so uh, we're not going to have a debate about what is a sport, what isn't a sport. We're not going to talk about whether or not boxing is a sport or not today. But it's just kind of my intro to this idea of the fight. And how sometimes life can seem like a fight. And, and, and boxing is one of those sports. I enjoy watching boxing for some reason. I don't know why. Like, sometimes I'm like, why am I, why am I doing this? Or watching MMA. Um, but there's just something about the, 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 oh man, I couldn't do that myself. One of the, 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 the kind of most well-known boxers in history, um, Muhammad Ali, uh, I, I, I think Muhammad Ali had a great life story. Uh, and also he had a kind of just like a great, uh, 
uh, attitude. He was somebody who was known for kind of always being there for being known for quotes or, or willing to, to talk trash to the other person. He, had, he definitely didn't lack confidence. You know, he famously said, I am the greatest of all time. Uh, he, he, he said, I, I, I float like a butterfly, I steam like a bee. One of my favorite stories, I, I was kind of researching for this sermon, um, a story, of, I was looking at stories of Muhammad Ali, and he famously, he went on, a, on an airplane one time, and uh, the flight attendant came and said, hey, you need to put on your seatbelt. To which Muhammad Ali responded, uh, Superman don't need no seatbelt. And the, 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 the flight attendant responded rightfully so, Superman don't need no airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, just, I just think that's hilarious because, yeah, Superman doesn't need no airplane. Uh, but I just like that story because it kind of just shows kind of the bravado that he had. And, and he wasn't just known as a well-known, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a boxer, he was known as a fighter and that he stood up for what he believed in. He famously refused to, to go to Vietnam. He stood. He, he, did, he thought that there was an unjust war, and he paid the consequences for that. Uh, because of that, he had to give up his heavyweight title. He, had, he won the heavyweight title three times. He won the gold medal in boxing, and at the same time, he made a lot of sacrifices. And then, as he got older, after he, he, he passed his prime in athleticism, he he kind of like I said, he was an inspirational figure in that he showed people. Um, what it's like to fight against a disease. He had Parkinson's. Um, and he kind of became an inspiration to a whole new generation in that way. And I think that's a great example of what it, what it looks like for us to be fighters, not just obviously in a ring and a, you know, fighting an opponent, but for us to be fighters against the things of the world. Sometimes the world, it just seems like a fight. I don't know about you, but I've had times where I've just woken up and I just feel like I just got beat up. I just went 10 rounds, you know? Not because it, I physically got punched in the face or anything like that, but because I just, life just seems like it's just coming at me wave after wave after wave, and I keep getting knocked down over and over and over again. And sometimes it's just tiring just to keep getting up. Uh, another another well-known uh, fighter a couple years ago, uh, Ronda Rousey. Um, some of you might be MMA people, might be. Um, and uh, she she was a uh, she won the title over and over again. She was undefeated until one day this this other fighter came and her name was Holly Holm and she just kicked her butt and she got knocked down and she she didn't get back up and this woman who seemed undefeatable, all of a sudden was defeated. And I, I yeah, I can relate. Or sometimes it feels like, hey, I'm, 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 I'm rocking, I'm doing things, I'm doing things the way that I want to be doing them, you know, things are going my way, and then all of a sudden I'm on the mat. Another famous fighter, Mike Tyson, said, uh, Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> Which, yeah. Uh, I, I got lots of plans until something happens that I'm not expecting, and next thing you know, yeah, I'm getting punched in the face. Physically, metaphorically. And in reality, that's what life is. Life is a bunch of unexpected turns. It's a bunch of times where we just, we, we feel like we're getting knocked down over and over again, and it's hard to get out of. And there's just things that happen to us that we're not expecting, they, you know, come out of left field. Um, I can relate to this. Earlier this year, I, I started off in January, I was um, by vocation while I was working at a, at a ministry out, out in Gilbert, and uh, my boss told me, hey, can you come in early one, one day? And I said, sure. Just think it was just a normal meeting, and then I was let go. I had nothing I had done wrong or anything like that, just that was the way that the business was going. Um, and so I had to pivot my life in a lot of ways. You know, how am I going to make money? How am I going to support my family? Uh, divorce, uh, money troubles, a death of a loved one. Oftentimes there's just these things that are outside of our control that can just knock us down. 
And sometimes we're fighting, we're fighting within our, our own selves to control things about ourselves that we know we need to control. We might have anger issues, we might have jealousy issues, we might have lust issues, we might have issues in our heart that we know that, you know, I, get, I need to get a control on this. As a, it's on the cover of your, your bulletin, uh, 2 Timothy, Paul says, I have, I have fought the good fight. And then in 1 Corinthians 9, 21, 9, 26, he says, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Sometimes we got to be strategic, right? Sometimes we get knocked down, and we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And what's the definition of insanity again? Do the same thing over and again and expecting different results, right? Oftentimes we, we think we can handle things on our own. In reality, what we need to do, be doing is we need to be looking to God. We need to be counting on the Holy Spirit and saying, God, I can't do this on my own. Help me. We need to be strategic. We need to have a purpose in the ways that we fight our battles. And we can't just hold things in because that's the way that things begin to fester. That's the way that like cancer is formed. That things just get held in, things don't get, get talked about. In reality, we need to admit our faults to God, we need to honor Him, and He will be there because He is there fighting for us. The truth is, is that oftentimes I think we focus our, the, the issues, the things that we're fighting in our life on people, when in reality we need to focus on, on what's really happening, the kind of the underlying, the thing, the thing underneath the thing, Sorry, it's a spiritual battle. Oftentimes with my kids, I know my daughter, she'll get upset. She just feels all the feelings. She's six years old. Um, I was, she was upset yesterday, and I was sitting there, and she was on my, sitting on my lap, and I was like, you know, what, why are you mad? And she told me, you know, her brother did something, and I said, you know, like, what, how did that make you feel? Let's get to the, let's get to the underlying issue. And what the underlying issue is, is that, you guys, there is a spiritual battle happening in this world, and we are in the middle of a fight, and, 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 and God, and there's a God of the universe who wants to be there and fight with us and fight for us. Ephesians chapter 6. I should have that up there. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, did you do the wrong verse? Okay, next slide, then. Uh, for our struggle is not against, this is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our struggles are not against flesh and blood. And oftentimes, I think that's the way that we get stuck. We are fighting a, a person, a thing, reality, we need to know that we are fighting a spiritual battle. I think there's two kind of ruts or problems that we can have with spiritual battles. I know sometimes people, when you talk about things of spiritual nature, you either fall into one or two camps. You can either be the person who over-spiritualizes everything. I, I, please don't hear me calling anybody out or anything like that. Uh, I know people who, you know, have prayed, God, just give me the right parking spot. God, which breakfast cereal should I pick? God, let all the green, let all the lights be green because I'm running late for work. And not to say that God can't do those things. I think God can. He's God. Uh, but I think oftentimes we, we kind of overemphasize that everything in our life is, spirit, is, is, is a spiritual battle. But then I also think, especially here, being here in America, where we are, we have, we are, let's just face it, we are comfortable compared to a lot of people in the world. We kind of fall into the second category of we just don't think about the spiritual realm. There's a movie that I like from the 90s called uh, The Usual Suspects. There's a great quote in there that says, the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world that he didn't exist. And sometimes we forget that there are 
there are demons, there are, there, there are things that are out there that are fighting for our soul, and we just think, oh, that's not, that doesn't have anything to do with me. And in reality, I, I think the devil's got a good strategy here. We, we are too busy. Sometimes, as Americans, we can be, be too busy thinking and fighting about other things, about, you know, I want to have that next pay raise. I want to get the, the bigger, nicer house. The, I want to get that boat. There's always something else that we, that we, that we feel like we, we, we need that's going to fill that emptiness inside of us. Or we're, gonna, we're too busy fighting about things that just don't matter that much, you know, sports, politics. I'd say those things don't matter at all, but it's just in the grand scheme of things, the truth is, is that God, we have a God that loves us and that we are fighting a battle against some of the darkest things. And when we realize that everything is spiritual, when we realize that God has a grand plan for us, we can begin to live our lives We can recognize, and as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We have been saved not because of anything we have done. We have, been, we have, we have a God of the universe who, who takes care of us and loves us, not because we have earned it, but because he is God and he has already defeated the powers of darkness, the powers of evil. And oftentimes we end up fighting amongst ourselves or we, mix, we, mix, we end up fighting with ourselves even. A war that doesn't need to be fought because the truth is, is that God has already won the battle. And we are called to fight from a position of victory, not defeat. Oftentimes I think, I know that I, when I was growing up, going to church, I thought that, you know, I had to do all the right things, I had to say all the right things, I had to kind of follow the checklist. I kind of pictured it, God as Santa, I guess, you know, maybe one of those checking it twice. When in reality, what Paul's saying here is that there's nothing you can do. God has already won the battle. Yes, you may, you may be in a fight. Yes, there might be times where you just feel like you are getting beat up over and over and over again. But you have already had the victory. You just have to claim it. And that is good news. Oftentimes, I think we get this idea of the gospel, this idea of good news, and we get mixed up with this idea of, oh, it makes me feel good. My life is going to be, you know, unicorns and rainbows from now on out. The reality, God is saying, no, I have fought the fight. I have covered you with my love. You, have, you are a victor. You are already victorious. And we find ourselves getting distracted by things that we don't need to be distracted by. And the truth is, we get distracted by a lot of things. I was listening to a podcast while I was driving down here today about just the way that like social media like changes our brains and like they're finding like evidence of, I mean it's kind of scary when you think about it and how it's kind of made to like trigger our anger and our and our passions especially when it's on a device or a computer and you can't see the other person I often find myself, you know, thinking to myself, like, as I type out something, like, oh, you're wrong. You know? Would I say this to a person in real life? <laughs> and if the answer is no, then I probably shouldn't type it out. But those are the things that we get distracted with over and over again. We, get, we find ourselves, and we, are, we, we are supposed to be a people of peace. We are supposed to be a people of hope. We are supposed to be a people who say that, that there is more to life than just getting up every day and kind of living out the mundane. We are supposed to say, be the people that say, you have been rescued from the darkness. God has already won the victory. You just have to accept it. And instead, I think oftentimes, we get to be known for people who are saying, you know, 
for Chicken Little, the, the sky is falling, everything is, is, everything is bad, it, it, it's not as good as it used to be. Which might be true, but you know what? Unless, unless you have a time machine, we're not going back to that. We are called to tell people that there is a better way to live life. And, and, and sometimes we can lose our direction. Sometimes we can lose the way that, that, that God wants us to live. And what he's telling us in this, in this book is to say that you might be in a fight. You might be in a spiritual battle against the, the, the spiritual things, the, the darkness of this world. But guess what? I have already won. Jesus is standing at the top of the podium and he has wearing the gold medal. And he's telling you, hey, get up here. And he's giving it to you right there. So you don't even have to do, you don't even have to compete. I'm giving you the victory. And when we forget that, we can lose sight of what it means to follow Jesus. We have been a people set apart. We, we might be fighting a spiritual battle. And there might be times where you feel like, hey, you know what? I just can't get out of bed today. I can't do things today. I don't know what's going on. Um, but God is there for you. Jesus has already made the sacrifice for you. There's nothing you can do to run from that. There's nothing we can do to run from God's grace and his love. There's nothing we can do. We are meant to be a people that are living new lives. It's part of the symbolism of baptism is this idea that you have died and you are coming back to life. You are living a new life. And that is something that we are invited into every single day. In Romans chapter 8, it says, You are meant to be more than conquerors. You are meant to be more than just the people who, who, just, who, who just come to church on Sunday and then go back and live a life that you don't find exciting. No, life is supposed to be exciting. That doesn't mean it's easy, though. At no point does God promise us easy life. But he's saying, I have given you victory. You just have to accept it. And, and another thing I want to I say as well, even though I think oftentimes when I've heard, I've heard similar sermons about this idea of spiritual warfare, this idea that we are, we are in a fight against you know, the powers of evil. Oftentimes I think we can kind of have this mistake that, oh, I'm in it on my own. Like I said, God's already one, he, he, he's given it to us, but guess what? Part of the beauty of the church is that we are in it together. We are meant to take on each other's burdens. We are meant to take on each other's problems. We are meant to, to love our brother and sisters the way that we love ourselves. Part of the gift of the church is that we are meant to be there for each other. And that sometimes when others are weak, we can be strong. And this is also something I want, I want us to hear too. Like, this doesn't mean that you're on your own, that you, you can't use the tools provided to you. I think sometimes we think, oh, if, there's, if everything's spiritual, and everything's, I just have to pray harder. It's like, no, sometimes you need to go to the doctor. Yeah. Sometimes you need to go and you need to get a checkup. You need to find out, hey, what's going on? Maybe I need to take some medicine. Maybe I need to you know, get some therapy. There's some trauma in my life. And yes, that's something that, that the devil can use. That can, he can try to hold that over you. Like I said, it's a matter of saying, no, I have, I have defeated that. But sometimes we need somebody else to kind of walk us through that. And I want you guys to know that, that to be, to, to, to live in that spiritual victory, to be the people of God who, who say, you know what, I have defeated the powers of evil of this world I, because I am one with Christ, it means that sometimes we have to look towards others to help us out as well. That means that sometimes, you guys, the beauty of the church is that we come here and we don't say that we are perfect. We say that we are broken and we are in the need of a Savior. And sometimes when we admit that we are broken, it means, hey, guess what? I need to lean on you. Or you say to somebody else, hey, you need to lean on me. Sometimes we can't even admit it to ourselves that we are in a tough spot. So life might be a fight. Life might be, uh, it feel like sometimes you're just getting knocked down over and over and over again. But guess what? We already have victory because we, we, are, we are one with Jesus. We already have victory because we are 
a, a, a people of God who are meant to, to share each other's burdens and meant to love each other and meant to, to, to help each other out in these difficult times. And we are a people of victory because we are meant to tell the world there is a different way to live life. There's a better way to live life. You don't have to just always just feel like, you know, you're on your own. Or you don't have to always feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just fighting something that I, 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 can't, I can't defeat. We are here to say, you know, you can defeat it. And God has defeated it for you. And you just have to take part in it. And so, I just want to invite you guys to imagine what would happen if we did that. Imagine if we chose to, to live our lives from a point of victory as opposed to defeat. To live our lives not angry, but full of joy, full of hope and compassion. And I, I, think, I think we could change the world. I think we could change the way that people see the world. The beauty of the church is that we are meant to live out God's earthly kingdom here today. We are meant to be an example of what it means like for God's heaven to come to earth. And we are meant to say, you have victory. We are here to support you. We are here to love you. And we are here to be the people of God. Let's pray. God, thank you for, for the gift that you've given us in your son Jesus. Lord. Thank you for not allowing our fight to be something that we handle on our own, Lord, that you have given us victory over the darkness, Lord. And that when we follow you, we are joining with you in that victory. We are saying that there is more to life, there is joy, there is hope, there is compassion, there is more to live in life than just always fighting the darkness. And that we know that Jesus Christ has come to save us and, and we know that we have, we have taken part in his victory as well, Lord. He has given us the gold medal and we don't even have to do anything. God, I just pray that as I as I leave this place today, that like I said, that this is your message, that it's something that can impact those who hear it, Lord. Whether it's in this room or watching online or, or watching on YouTube, or whatever, I just pray that this is a message that speaks to those to somebody out there who needs to hear it, who needs to know that they they are not just worthy, but they are victorious, and that they are loved, and they are called to be loved. All is in Jesus. Amen. Um, I was thinking about the fight. And so the season that I'm in in my life is we have kids at the house. So we are very uh, familiar with this word. Um, <laughs> Jeremy's daughters are. 10 years apart, and yet they still fight. How? They don't, even, they don't even play the same toys. They don't even speak the same language. I was thinking about that, and I was thinking, you know, we're still somewhat newlyweds, so we're very, also very aware of the word fight. You gotta fight through all the kinks when you first get married. Is that true? Those of you that are married, is, is that true, or is it us? Do we need to... I mean, we're already... We're already seeking the Lord and counseling, but like, right? No one was like going like this, and so I'm like, oh, babe, we're in trouble. We're just over here fighting, and no one else is. No, do you guys not fight? I'm not saying we should. I'm not saying we should fight. I'm just saying it's just a natural like tension, I should say, right? You're really what? Do you guys fight, or are you just wedded bliss all the time? Well, Jim's perfect. I get it. He, he learned better. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I think this will bother him. Let's just poke it. Just no, but the reason why I'm saying that 
is so we're in this season of somewhat newlywed, we have kids at home. You may not, you may be past that. Maybe you have grandkids already, or maybe you're empty nesters, but there's always some kind of tension, right? Some kind of fight going on. And I was thinking about that because um, yesterday we went, we needed some family time, so we went up to let the kids play in this big, it was huge jungle gym. I mean, you could literally get lost in it, it was kind of funny. So, you know, Lexi's like, run around, find me, see how fast I can do this whole thing, you know. And Hazel's just, you know, we're just trying to make sure she doesn't hit somebody because we're at that season in life. But I watched, I watched them do something. They had a little kid area for like probably like two and under age. So we were over there with Hazel and I watched her and she just would stand there. And I thought, oh, my little chicken, because I want her to be brave. Because I like roller coasters and wild stuff and I'm like, she's, but I'm declaring that she's going to be brave. But I watched her, and I watched her just wait, because she was one of the younger people there. And then when she would see someone do something, then she was like, oh, I could try that. So I watched her like this. Um, they had this small little slide, and you know, we tried to convince her to do it. She didn't want to do it. But then she saw one kid do it, and I think she was like, wait, I can do that. So she went up and went down, and once she did it, then, I'm not even joking, I, I was so bored, out of my mind, watching this girl walk up three steps and slide down 20, 30, 40 times. I mean, I'm glad she was wearing her stuff up, but I'm watching her, but she was so confident. And the reason why I say that is because, like I just pointed out in our vulnerableness, in our marriage, and in our family, we are looking to people who've already done it. And when he says that we're the body, He's right. If you look around our congregation, we have um, we have a, a seasoned congregation. We have a couple scattered in their 40s and 50s, and then we have like a few of us, right? And so we are looking to you to show us how to fight the good fight, how to fight for our marriage, not fight with each other, right? And um, you know, we we have a preteen in our house, like. Like, we need prayer, but we also need people who've already done it. Because someone's not leaving, surviving. So, they, and I'm strong, so I feel bad for Lexi. But I'm just saying, we need that. And so the body of Christ, and I'm talking about that in a family unit, but I'm talking about it with anything. If you fought an addiction, and you, through Jesus, God is the conqueror, like you said. He's the victor, but through Jesus, if he has already made you victorious then you better start showing us what you did in that fight, what God did through you, because we need it. If we're supposed to take over the church, what does that look like? This, I've only been about my dad for two weeks, and I'm like, oh my goodness, what does he do? He does so much. And I'm like, there's no way. But I'm learning, because at some point, it will be my response, not necessarily here, but I'm just saying, to, to take on the church, to lead it, to... And, and so I ask you, if you're fighting the good fight and you, and you are, and what does that look like? Because we really do need each other. We really do. So instead of saying, hey, it's good to see you. Oh, you look so nice. And then leaving, let's actually be the body of Christ. Right? I mean, I'm not saying don't go give unsolicited advice. I don't need everyone's marriage advice right now. I'll be overwhelmed because that's my personality. I'm hypervigilant. I'll be way overwhelmed. But I'm saying... That as God gives you victory, right? We're free, so we actually get the authority to help other people be free. That's what Jesus did with the disciples. And so I just pray that we would begin to be a body together and that we truly would fight together because our battle is not with each other. Our battle is not even actually with the people out there. So we have to remember that. So did that encourage you? Did that go with you? Do you feel like good? Okay. I'm supposed to do the closing, and I don't really know what that is. Tomorrow, next week, I'm just coming with a joke. Because y'all need to know how messed up these kids are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the body of Christ, that each one of us is a part of that body. Each one of us is a different part of the body, and it's a good part. It's a godly part. It's a part that you created. I pray that we would work together, that we would carry one another's burdens. 
I pray that we would pray for one another. We would fight for one another. And I thank you, Lord, that the victory is yours, that you have already won. And so those who are in you have already won. Thank you, God. I pray that you would continue to keep these doors open, that you will continue to keep these ACs running, that you will continue to plant seeds in the hearts of the people here so that we can truly be one of many churches that is seeking the lost. We thank you for leaving the 99 for us. Help us to do the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're done talking. We hope you have a great Sunday, a great Sabbath. Don't forget ties and offerings in the back. We will see you next week, okay? Sound good? Okay.